<clears throat> Welcome to this week's uh, science recap and science summary. Let's get right into it. First, we start off with Prince Williams being Prince Williams targeting billionaires of forgetting about the space race and saving Earth. So, Prince Williams delivered a jab at billionaires to stop the space race and focus on Earth and look beyond the planet's horizons. He said that our world's greatest minds should focus more on saving the Earth than looking beyond the horizons. This comes after Jeff Bezos and a famous Star Trek actor, William, became the oldest man to go to space. He said, quote, the fragility of the planet, the fragility of this planet and coming catastrophic event, and we all need to clean up this act now. So right now there's three main billionaires heading to space. We obviously have Elon Musk with SpaceX, Jeff Bezos with Blue Origin, and Richard, Richard Branson with Virgin Galactic, all with different goals. Out of this, I do believe that Elon is doing the most for our planet. So with those three billionaires, that leaves 2,752 others to save the world, and they've had decades to work on it, but no one has really made any real progress. All right, on to the next topic. Comes with LG signing a battery with Sigma Lithium. So Sigma Lithium produces 100% powered by clean energy batteries. This is a six year contract signed by LG Energy Solutions and the supplier Sigma Lithiums. They say that it, this signals importance of securing lithium supply. So lithium mining requires huge amounts of groundwater to pump out brine for drilling wells. And this estimates show that there's 2 million liters of water needed to produce one ton of lithium. This is very um, disastrous to the environment. Um, in Chile, lithium and other mining activities consume 65% of the water, causing groundwater depletion, soil contamination, and other forms of environmental degradation. Why is this important? Well, securing a long-term supply of lithium for any manufacturer is key in this market. Given the supply chain disruptions and the growth in energy storage deployment and projects for future contracting, the South Korean battery system and electronic mobile company will purchase initial 6,000, 660 tons from 2022 to 2023, this amount increasing to 100,000 tons per year from 2024 to 2027. There's also an additional option to get an additional 50k tons a year. So. Sigma Lithium produces 100% powered by clean energy and does not utilize hazardous chemicals. And it recirculates 100% of the water and uses dry stacking for their tailings. This is magnificent for the environment. And they believe that this sustainability, scalability, and reliability in production of high quality, quality lithium will be essential to meet the demands for sustainable energy leaders. <clears throat> Next, we have a new treatment for cancer. This new cancer treatment destroys tumors and terminate ill. Um, this is just based off one patient though, so that is a big caution. Um, the one patient who was expected to die four years ago told the guardian <clears throat> of this amazing moment that nurses called him in weeks before, weeks after he joined the study, to say that the tumor had completely disappeared. This is a 77 year old grandfather who is now cancer free and apparently spent the last week on a cruise. Like I said, this was only one person, so unfortunately, the results were not all statistically significant. Of course, these patients were essentially terminally ill, so it's possible that the treatment could have had more consistent results if given earlier. 
it's also possible that there's only a small number of cancers that are actually being targeted with this treatment. So we don't know the exact cancer that this person had, and we don't know if this is for all cancers, which it probably isn't. So it is good news, but with a grain of cause. God. Next, we have 27 uh, petawatts of energy could be generated each year from rooftop solar panels. Often, solar panels, solar power gets pushed back because people believe it would use too much land to power the world. But in reality, we could power the world with our rooftops alone if we wanted to. Of course, using one half of the 1% the world's crown, we could power the world as well. But rooftop solar is better because it brings reliance to locals and generates greater revenue for structures. So, by various estimates, rooftop solar panels could provide a quarter to half of the world's energy needs by 2050. But within this wide range, there are many uncertainties and researchers have struggled develop a true global picture of what rooftop solar panels could look like. So without continuing reductions, so with continuing reductions in manufacturing cost and improvements, the ability to install this equipment on rooftops are, are the best way and the fastest way to increase sustainability energy supplies. The greatest um, potential still relies on Asia, lies in Asia, North America, and Europe. On to the next story of this week. A little bit scary, but yeah. Um, this company called Ghost Robotics strapped a rifle onto a robotic dog. So we see this image right here where somebody strapped on to a, strapped a sniper rifle onto a back of a quadruple I mean onto the back of a robot dog. This image was shared on Twitter by military robot maker Ghost Ro Robotics and it shows that this dystopia that we could be heading towards. So this machine is called SPUR or special purpose unmanned rifle and it can shoot 6.5 millimeter cartridges of a rifle ammunition designed for long range targets. So we don't know at this time the level of autonomy of this robot, but it's designed to be fully remote and operated. But any new robot being built with an intent to kill should have us all worried. Like we've seen the movies, we've read this sci-fi of what's to come. Going back to uh, more renewable energy, this is from the UK. So the UK will be hosting the UN Climate Change Conference from October 31st to November 20th. And the UK's Prime Minister, Boris Johnson, promised that all of the UK's energy will come from sustainable energy by 2035. He said that the target primarily be um, achieved through advanced wind powers, along with other sources, sources such as solar. So the real allocation of UK's energy to sustainable sources is part of its government's plan to reduce the carbon emissions by 78% by 2035, and it plans to ban the sale of gasoline and diesel-powered cars by 2030. It's only nine years away, really 80 years away. Speaking of banning gasoline-powered cars, California, from the Los Angeles time, California moves to ban gas lawnmowers and leaf blowers. So machinery with so-called small off-road engines also includes chainsaws, weed trimmers, and golf carts, all which create as much smog causing pollution in California as passenger cars, and with reducing those emissions, it's pivotal to improving the air quality and combating climate change. 
not only in California, but around the world. And they say that this is a modest approach to trying to eliminate, to limit the massive amounts of pollution that this equipment emits, not to mention the health impacts on the workers who are using it constantly. So the state has set aside $30 million to help professional landscapers and gardeners to make the transition from gas to battery powered tools. But an industry representative said that this is inadequate for the estimated 50,000 small businesses that would be affected by this law. So California is known for drastic drastic compared to the rest of the nation but honestly every time there's someone mowing the lawn or using like a weed whacker you always get those gas fumes and it's just uncomfortable now saying that they're gonna ban these is kind of in the next uh ban them in the next three years is kind of pretty fast considering the potential loss of using these machines that are could be brand new and it will create even more waste so it would be nice to see them phase phase them out slowly but we'll have to see and now we're back to silver once again so China's solar power has reached price price equivalent with coal. And like everywhere else, China has seen the cost of solar power dive in the last decade, with a 63% drop between 2011 and 2018 alone. That's massive. This is in line that the installation of solar has risen dramatically. Currently, a third of the entire planet's new solar capacity is being commissioned in China. Yeah, China has passed the US in 2013 and Germany in 2015 and now has over 250 gigawatts active, which is more than double what its economic plan has specified by this point. So this gives China plans to hit net zero emissions by 2060 and it's likely to continue, continue this building spree of solar energy. And with the transition to solar energy and renewables, we need a way to store it. And Tesla has unveiled this new structured battery. So with Gigafactory Berlin giving out a tour last week, Tesla unveiled its latest structure of the battery of 468 cells during a Gigafactory tour in Berlin ahead of the Model Y production at the new factory. So, the start of the production at the Giga Factory Berlin is not just significant for Tesla's growth in Europe, but it also marks the launch of an important new version of the Model Y. Tesla plans to build out the new Model Y at this Berlin factory on a whole new platform with this new battery technology. So currently, Tesla builds battery packs by combining cells into modules which are put together to form a battery pack, and this battery pack is installed into the vehicle platform. With this new concept, with this new concept, the difference is that Tesla is not using modules, but instead will be building the entire battery pack as a structural platform of the vehicle, with the battery cells helping to solidify the platform as one big unit. So now that the Gigafest at Berlin has come down. Tesla says that what's impressive about this is the relative simple platform of just three parts, a battery pack and two large cast pieces is responsible for a large part of the total vehicle. Google makes a step this way this week. 
So there would be no more ads denying climate change on, Go on Google. Last Thursday, Google announced that it will be demonetizing content that makes misleading or false claims about climate change. They have been critical for its, Google has been critical for its role of spreading misinformation for many topics, and many people have been unhappy with the company. So people paying for ads don't want their ads appearing alongside misinformation filled videos. And con content producers don't want to see their products interrupted by error-filled messages. Google will be using a combination of human eyes and automated tools for this enfor enforcement once the policy goes into effect this November. Honestly, it's nice to see this. Um, tackling down on misinformation is hard, but it needs to be done on all platforms and many subjects need to be covered. Going next on to more renewable energy. This is a huge step for the United States. The Biden administration plans for offshore wind everywhere. So the Biden admin has given the final approval for vineyard wine, for not wine, vineyard wind near Massachusetts and has been involved with three larger wind projects. They'll be sited off New Jersey. There are two other areas that are leading the process. One will be near New York Bright, which includes sites north of New York Harbor along Long Island. And the second is by Carolina Long Beach, which includes areas near Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, north toward and a little bit north. So lease sales there have already started up in the Department of Interior is considered opening up further sites adjacent to those. But the department is interested in expanding offshore wind significantly. To that end, it's currently process viewing sites north of California as well. There are further areas that they might expand into. The Mid-Atlantic and Oregon are also seeing this, as well as the Gulf of Maine, which will see a study period wrap up in 2023. And on to the last topic this week. We have NASA's Lucy's mission which took off early Saturday morning. <clears throat> the spacecraft is named Lucy because it rocketed to the skies with diamonds Saturday morning on a 12-year quest to explore eight asteroids around Jupiter. Seven of these mysterious space rocks are among swarms of asteroids sharing orbits with Jupiter. And this Atlas V rocket took off took off Saturday morning and Lucy will be on a journey spanning 4 billion miles. So Lucy is named after a 3.2 million year old skeleton and remains of a human ancestors found in, e in Ethiopia around 50 years ago. And the discovery got its name from the 1967 Beatles song, Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. The spacecraft also carries a disc made out of lab-grown diamonds for one of its science instruments. In, in a pre-recorded NASA video, the Beatles drummer paid a tribute to his late colleague John Lennon, credited for writing the song and inspired this all. So that's it for this week's science summary. I hope you enjoyed, and I hope you come back next week to learn more and see what's going on in our world of science. Thank you and take care.